Well, we're at the end of February, and we had a real soaker last night. It poured, and everything's wet. I wish I could have got it on tape just now. I just had deer here. They come through and they hide in our trees, and then they go across into the wildlife quarter. I'm sure they came through here, not for Gary's apples, which are not flower well they're flowering but there's no apples yet but to graze a safe place to graze see all the greenery because they come through to graze and even though I don't see them they could see me I've seen them in pairs when I say pairs not necessarily male and female but I just saw them and now I don't but the wood chips are doing good. And there's the old truck bed that we grew, what, 50 plus spaghetti squash in. We're not doing that. We haven't done that for a couple years. We had too much. Nobody wanted it. Gary's not that crazy about spaghetti squash. So this time, you know, last year we just grew a little bit. But the wood chips are still piling here. He has told the trucking the trucks not to come with the wood chips not yet he's got way too much he's got some down below by his garden and then we've got all this here but as you can see he's been moving it he's moving it into the garden and different things I know I've talked about this before the area I'm walking in is the size of a football field and we actually use this for parking and putting things here and this let me see if I can show you the ground. I don't even know if there's any exposed land. I could not be walking out here comfortably after pouring rain. Let me see if I can go around this way. It's all clay. See the ground here? It's all clay. And when this stuff gets wet, let me see, when that gets wet, it just sticks to you. It already stuck to my hand a little bit. It just sticks to you like glue. So you'd be walking around on this and not only can you not grow in it, you cannot walk on it. Well now that he's put all the wood chips, as you can see all through here, not only can we walk on it, it's comfortable. Let me see if I can show you my shoes. Look at that. I don't have not one speck of mud on my shoes. So I could freely walk through here and go back inside and not drop anything. I mean, even the wood chips don't stick. I hate to have to turn you guys upside down, but look at that. Let's see. Let me see if I can get you down there. That's one thing about wood chips that is really great because earlier before the wood chips were ever laid here it was impossible to walk through this muck literally muck see here's the ground hard packed clay but when it gets wet it just sticks to you so now we don't have that issue what is happening now though is the ground is changing so at some point maybe we will take this area but we do park here though but maybe we will someday start planting more and more Right now he uses this for, um, he lets the tree companies come in because they can get their great big massive trucks in here and then they can drive down that road too and drop off the wood chips. But we finally got some rain. They're calling for more rain later in the week, which is really good. And he's been moving this into the garden, into walkways. This stuff has been just sitting here. It has been dry. So it will take time to break down even better. Now this is really nice, fine stuff. So if you lay this on top, it will quickly break down. But we're in a severe drought. So um, unless you wet it, it's just going to stay. That one I have been hitting with a little bit of water before he cut through here. So I think it started to break down a little bit. But literally, I'd be watering the truck bed. And I would just kind of put some water on the top. So it worked a little bit. These I didn't, and it's also bigger pieces. 
He's using this for a different part in his garden. Plus he's been collecting the big pieces and using them in the fireplace. So he's been burning them. But yes, we had rain. Look at the clouds. Some areas are still getting rain and it's cold. I think right now we're probably about 38, 40 degrees. It should warm up a little bit, but we're not going to get higher than 58, 60. But he's been using the bigger chunks for covering just on top areas that he's not planning in. And then the real big chunks in there he hand pulls out and he's been using it for kindling for our fireplace. I'll tell you, you know, we have a heater and when you run a heater, it's really expensive. It adds up. And now that we started using the fireplace more and more, I mean, our gas bill is like $20, $30. We get notices that we're doing so well. Of course, we're doing so well, they'll raise us because they're not getting enough money out of us. That's the way it works here in California. But uh, we use our fireplace and it's amazing that wood burning seems to heat a house better than gas. It, it's a warmer heat. It's hard to explain, but it really is nice. And the whole house is really nice and warm. But anyways, that's what he uses the super big pieces for. And he uses that for kindling. But we have had rain. And like I said, I can be walking anywhere I want and I don't have mud on me. And boy, the buckets on my deck filled up with water. So I got nice rainwater for seeds to start growing. Here's another one of my compost bins that I'm working on. This has really got very little compost. There is some eggshells and some stuff in there. But this is a lot of stuff from the garden. So when I'm doing it so big, I'm just cleaning up the garden, getting rid of all the brown stuff. See, like stuff like this. Just throw, you know, leaves that are no good. Piling it up. And soon, when I get really serious about what I want to put in there, I'll start throwing in the kitchen scraps with all the rest of the goodies in there. Coffee grinds and eggshells and leftover vegetables, leftover food that wasn't eaten. And then just cover it with wood chips. If you don't have wood chips, use potting soil. It works fine. And that's, you know, what I do. And then I just put some zucchini seeds in there and boy, do they take off. So... Oh, that one didn't go on. Oh, it tipped over. It's my solar pump. Let's see. That's another one of the bins. I think I showed you that before. The same thing. What I've done is I've set this bin up. And I've got, again, dead leaves and stuff from the garden. And then halfway up, I started putting in the kitchen scraps, whatever. Toilet paper rolls, even. You know, anything, anything that didn't get eaten, buried in the refrigerator. And instead of planting in it, I did plant one thing in here. I did plant this red kale. But um, I put them in pots, see? Now these pots do have holes on the bottom. Because I want the earthworms that get in there to travel up and down in the pot. But come spring, when it finally warms up, I will probably remove a few of those pots and then I will plant some zucchini in here because I really like zucchini. It's so versatile. I can use it for so many things. But this way, it's not going to waste. And while I'm watering these plants that were set up in the pots on top, it's keeping, you know, this wet. And I don't have to water my compost bin. I'm watering the pots. I don't know if I can lift any of these to see what's underneath. You and I could be surprised at the same time. Oh, look at that. See? I did not put any earthworms in here. They find their way in. And I'm sure there's more. Where there's one, there's more. But let's put this back. And that's what I do. Now the earthworms are coming. They're eating up with whatever I put in there. The, the leaves from the garden, the dead matter from the garden, and cardboard, like I said, toilet paper rolls, or kitchen scraps. They're eating all that. And they're going to make that so rich and ready to go. All I have to do is pop in a couple zucchini seeds, remove a couple of these pots, or put them in between. But it'll be too much with the pots. I'll probably take like 
It depends on if I want two zucchini plants. I might take three pots out and leave two. But I, I layer, so I don't have to think about watering my totes that I'm composting in. But I, let's let the plane go by. But what I do is I like to layer and this way I'm only taking care of the pots and I'm forgetting about my compost bin. And now I'm going to have it ready come mid-spring when it's nice and warm and I want to start planting zucchini. Who knows? Maybe in a month from now. It's all ready to go. Oh, look at this. Look at this. See if I can zoom in. So many I really don't want around here. They have gotten into my yard and chewed my hoses in half twice. My dogs missed them. They didn't see them. And I don't know. It must have been the puppies. I mean, what else would chew the hose in half? Not my puppies. Their puppies. But anyways, just wanted to do a walkthrough and show you what did rain or wood chips are wet. Uh, what I do want to do is kind of be able to hold the camera and show you how the wood chips are breaking down so beautiful. This is another area that you could grow nothing in. The people that lived here before had patio furniture out here. That was it. They couldn't grow anything in this ground. It was just hard packed clay that when it got wet, it became like glue. So Gary brought in those wood chips about two and a half years ago and it, it is changing. Look, I've got mint all over. Yes, I know how bad it is. You know what? We use so much mint. Look at the size of the leaves on this mint. We use so much mint, and I'm not planting here right now, that it's okay. I'm going to cut it down so it won't be so high off the ground because I have to be careful in the summer we get a lot of rattlesnakes. And I want to be able to see them before they see me. And it's unfortunate over the years the people have changed the rattlesnakes here in Southern California. Growing up you knew that there was a rattlesnake you'd walk by and it would shake that tail. But unfortunately, over the years, so many of the ones that were shaking their tail were killed. People would see them and kill them. So the ones that are left now don't shake their tail. They rarely shake their, they rarely shake their tail. In fact, recently I went on a hike and I was with my nephew, and actually my nephews, telling them to be careful, watch for rattlesnakes. I walked right by one, literally, inches and he said you like the one you just walk by by your foot turn around there it was just curled up never shook its tail so it's just a trait that they kind of don't have anymore but that's it I wanted to do an update on the rain I'll have to empty out some of the water here and I've been giving the birds some seeds to bring in more birds um, I want to show you more on how the wood chips are breaking down beautiful I don't know if I can see that here, no. I'll have to find another area. But uh, anyways, going back to the mint, yes, I let it grow and it's easy to take out. Take a fork, uh, a digging fork, and just pull everything out when I want it out. I'm not planting anything right now there, so let the mint do its thing. It's actually nice when you walk across it, it smells so good. And that's what I like, you know, when you walk on herbs, it smells really, really good. So that's the update. Our weather's changing. We're getting a little bit of rain and that's really going to help a lot. Everything is still nice and green. Look at this. Well, you know what I should show you? Somebody made a comment in one of my past videos on some kale. They said, oh, pull it out. It's no good. It's no good. Now what you need to do is if, if you like the plant, you know, everybody does their own thing. If you like the plant, clean it up. I cleaned it up. Look at that. The leaves may be a little small, but you know, it's I'm using that every day. We're feeding off of the, we're feeding off of it. So it's been really, really nice and it's really taking off. It drapes down all the way down, and I've got leaves everywhere. Plus I compost the, the yellow leaves, actually compost it right back in, in place there. Yeah, when you're cleaning your garden. You got leaves like that? Just compost it right there. 
it's perfect but this has just been beautiful and it tastes so good I would have no reason to kill this plant and take it out when I'm ready I will but you know right now it's not ready I'm not ready there's an old Swiss chard the birds are eating that one the white crowned sparrows come in and eat their greens every morning so they're eating that Swiss chard but there's so much food here I mean it's, it's really no big deal what they're eating so I just wanted to show you that we've had rain finally like I said we had a tiny bit of rain a while back and then it stopped and we everybody's been waiting for rain it did get very cold and I can walk I don't bring in any mud that's the wonderful thing with wood chips no mud let's see if we can I wanted to show you earthworms how uh-oh uh-oh I know what that is something came in here and chewed off one of my eggplant flowers didn't want to eat it just wanted to chew it up could have been a rat could have been the ground squirrel I saw running around could have been anything I don't have a shovel let me see if I can find a shovel Let's see problem is I'm right-handed let me see if I can switch if you move the wood chips again you want to use a bigger shovel than this look at that oh you know you probably can't see it I just dug up a whole bunch of worms I just saw them oh he must have kicked them out of the way I saw them I don't know where oh there they are see there's one right on top oh there's more here there's more here look at that they are breaking down the wood chips and what I do sometimes is I come back through here grab some of that wood chips and put it in my pots that I layer in my compost bins but we'll have to do a really good update on wood chips and how it has changed but this morning I just wanted to do a morning walkthrough after the rain and show you that we've had rain there's no mud and everything is so nice and green everything went through the freeze really good too last week didn't lose anything from the freeze I thought we were gonna lose our eggplant we did not so the plants didn't get as cold as certain areas because remember your whole yard is a microclimate you may have one spot that's cold it might be colder in that bin and warmer over here just for whatever reason the way the Sun hits it the way the wind comes through every area is different that's why if you can't grow something in one spot try another spot and I've done that I mean look in here how small the colors are growing in there and they are seedlings and a seedling came up in there and just took off I mean every area your whole yard your whole property are microclimates I met a guy that lived in Big Bear in December and he was growing tomatoes in the snow because he knew that he could plant his tomatoes up against his house outside he's growing tomatoes mind you and it was freezing up there and what he did was he draped down a piece of plastic over him he had just attached it to his roof lining draped it over and he was growing tomatoes and he told me he does it all the time so you can create microclimates as well so with that I just wanted to say hello goodbye <laughs> and kind of do a walkthrough on the rain show you some our wood chips are breaking down and I'll do some more videos soon and keep everything going I can't wait I can't wait for the warm weather I'm, I'm a I'm a hot lady I like it hot so have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow oh and please like and subscribe too okay bye bye